Open up my lips, O Lord, and my mouth will sing praises to your name. Come quickly and help me, O Lord, and be speedy to keep me away from harm. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was then. It is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give glory to our God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this 
shape to a whole congregation of the Israelites. Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaint. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson comes from the feet. Now I'll try to eat the epistles. The epistle lesson comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 14. St. Paul writes, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling in which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean? but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Very 
truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated for our sermon song, God is so loved. Thank you. 
turn to wager up the middle, but rather gain better nutrition, and better healthy food choices and life choices. The doctors always say you just need to increase your exercise. Helpful for some, not for all. Leave behind the refined sugars and carbs, they tell us still. But one of the most prominent features of our own Lutheran faith tradition is we're able to eat or do just about everything in moderation, at least what goes into our mouths. But when it comes to Jesus, the bread of life, a daily indulgence, a regular feast, regular eating from him is much preferred. John's Gospel is highlighting this bread of life, Jesus' diet. A truly healthy way of holy eating, a lifetime commitment sealed in our baptismal waters, promising heavenly results. More than a personal trainer or dietitian, Jesus is with you and within you every single step of the way. Not only guiding or encouraging you through his spirit, but being the very bread for your journey. Literally, he's getting you into spiritual shape for the life at hand as you work and in your work as you serve others now and also in anticipation of the heavenly feast yet to come. Jesus' bread of life teaching takes place soon after he miraculously fed the 5,000 people with a few loaves of bread and fish. Now the crowds think they caught the gravy train and they don't want this party to end. After some pride they put in their order, give us a sign to believe in you. As if the 5,000 fed with the 12 basket holes left over wasn't enough of a sign. But Jesus suggests they are really looking for different security. We call it the food security. In past eras, people stockpiled foods for fear of shortages. Like even in our early days, a year and a half ago, when the COVID pandemic began and all the stockpiling took place. But to the crowd's disappointment, Jesus isn't promising an endless buffet of material goodies. He's not promising better living, lower taxes, an exit of the Romans, or less stress in their daily grind, although some or almost all of those things would eventually come to that point. But no, he's offering himself. Guy standing there who they still want signs from. He's offering himself and saying that he is their bread, that he is the only real food that can ever fill all people's deepest needs unto eternal life. Truth be told, the crowd of people really don't want a special miraculous sign from Jesus, they just want bread. Bread is a staple of life. The Roman army there in Israel understood that more than anyone there when they even used bread and entertainment as distractions. Keep people having fun with enough free food and the government can easily do as they please and the Romans did. If bread could be conjured up so cheaply, why not just have Jesus do it again and again and again? Like the genie in Aladdin's lamp offering the three magical wishes. He can be their own personal pantry. What a quick, easy way to get by. That thinking comes up to us too in our own ways. We're needy for freebies, just like the crowds gathered there. We'd like easy access to what we've always expected, be it food, or good health, or pain-free bodies, no more stress, or no more anxiety in our lives, maybe more money, maybe things that we want to buy are cheaper, plus the individual little wants and desires we all crave. We crave things even in our own minds that often we're not even aware of. We have preconceived ideas of what we think Jesus should be doing in our lives that he isn't doing at this very moment, and it causes us to be selfish. That's what we want our religion to become, too. We work long and hard following Jesus here and there. Now it's time to cash in. Maybe we could have some quick, tangible evidence that he's on our side. If faith in him or his son can't make our lives easier and quicker, well, we figure 
pray should wake up our hearts and minds to not only our own needs, but all others' needs. For Jesus, living bread means faith and life in abundance by receiving him, by believing him, eating of him, trusting that his food is enough to sustain us, that Jesus is enough, and that we can enjoy life now and in the hope of eternal life later. Because Jesus does take good care of us now. And this fills up our gratitude. And the joy of passing this bread, this faith, on to someone else who desperately needs it. For we are then forgiven. We are allowed to eat the bread of life. And we get to have a new start each morning. Not so that we'll one day forget about our sins or forget our troubles or ignore responsibilities. But always, always to recognize the giver of every good gift. And treasure the forgiveness of our Lord and enjoy that living Lord who lives inside of us and keeps us going through our faith. That should take a great load off of our minds. Jesus isn't about showering us with just more stuff or a life of ease. It's about getting a real transformation, a new life. And that helps us cope with who we are. That we are broken sinners, but redeemed and loved and welcomed and fed in Jesus. That's why Jesus doesn't get angry and start yelling at the crowds or us for seeking more bread, but rather corrects them about chasing after bread that doesn't last, meaning to stress and strain and worry and focus only over the bread and the goods of life that don't last anyway. Now, employment and being a good caretaker is one thing, but letting those concerns always have first place in your life to occupy your thoughts minute by minute, that is the problem Jesus is indicating. Because then soon we're focusing on that and not God. Especially when he's offering bread that lasts. Why not take advantage of that? Bread that keeps on feeding through all of life's ups and downs. This is why he says, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Now, that doesn't mean your stomach today won't start to growl at the end of our church service, but by feeding on Jesus' body and blood as we do through the life of the church, we grow in that trust that we will appreciate and treasure and learn to enjoy that special relationship with Christ that he will keep feeding us. And we can be certain of that. Because we will always have longing and he will always be there for us. The crowds, yes, they do meet this gift of a bit of arrogance. And we know it's sometimes hard to be in this we don't always like to be helped. We think it means maybe we're not good enough or we're less than, which it doesn't. Or that we owe somebody something then. But Jesus doesn't get into all that. And we can't go about life thinking we're all on our own anyway. We are totally dependent upon God for everything. After all, Jesus just fed the crowds. And they're trying to teach him about Moses feeding their ancestors in the desert. That's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> is new to this idea that he hadn't heard of that somewhere being a rabbi at all. And Jesus wasn't even there himself as the Son of Man. And that's interesting because he uses the term Son of Man, not Son of God, not Savior, not Jesus, the Son of Man, because that's the connection, of course, to Adam, the first man. And that connects him to the promise of the Savior who followed the children of Israel everywhere they went. And certainly, Jesus was there. When the manna fell from the sky and the quails came and they ate, and but that they can't see, this Jesus is greater than Moses. Moses himself called the manna the bread the Lord has given. Moses didn't feed them, the Lord did. And here is Jesus doing that with a better bread, a bread that lasts, and this is new, because that will keep them alive forever. It gives you heaven on earth and the promise of heaven after earth. And it scares them. And maybe you will look to us to think that life can actually be better, that we can live and love and do better. People will not automatically want to be better. We don't think maybe it's even possible. We want to just be told it's okay as it is. No. We don't want to be remaining in sickness or being wrong or caught in trouble or thinking no one cares about us. We want to escape that. We want to have something that is meaningful in our lives. He is the perfect.
perfect exchange. We need, need that and get rid of all that. Because he cares, he loves, he lives, he dies. He hears our cries, he wears the world's sins. He feels our pain. And we are only rid of those things because Jesus became that son of man, the sinner for every human crowd on this earth. And on that cross he died and made all those things disappear, just as if no one ever sinned. That is the goodness of this gift, the dying and the rising that Jesus makes available for everyone on this earth, in all times and in all places. He's not only bread for the crowds, but for every generation before and up until the end of time. The bread we share in the Holy Communion is the same bread of life. The bread we hear and read of in the scriptures, the same feeding that gives us that new life. And it unites us across the world with other believers. We're not Christians because we call ourselves that. We are only Christians because we are baptized into Christ's very own body, nourished and strengthened and absorbed in that love of Christ, eating and drinking of Him. And when we become His hands and feet and face, sharing that bread of life with a world that is already stuck and yet still wanting, we are called to love and to serve and to listen. We're not called to make everyone be exactly like us in here. We're not called to control all the outcomes. We're not even called to protect our little kingdoms. We're called to share this bread of life, this Jesus diet, with your family, friends, neighbors, so that they too can rely on God's word and see the blessings you have. And maybe they'll want them to, to heal their hope and to follow her. The work in the church takes time. Trusting and listening and offering welcome and walking in friendship and loyalty. And that's how the bread of life affects us. We're new people. Remaining in Jesus is the only way. And he'll keep you making, helping you make those choices through the working of the Holy Spirit in your life, through prayer and through scripture. Your life will be a workout with him in ministries of worship and fellowship and outreach. His body and blood will continue to he is a part of you, and you are a part of him. The living body of Christ, the Jesus diet, the only diet that really saves. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now the peace of God is good beyond our human understanding. God, your hearts and lives in the one true faith in Jesus Christ. Now and always. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing our praise in God be free.
for sending your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to be the bread of life for the world. Forgive us for elevating earthly appetites above devotion to you. Feed us with the knowledge of Christ so that we recognize our sin and gladly repent in his name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Feed those who hunger for righteousness and holiness with the gospel of salvation in Jesus' name. And continue to gather all your people to be fed with his body and blood for eternal life. Direct all pastors and teachers, evangelists and missionaries in the truth of Christ, so that your people may be united in confession and witness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those whose daily need for healthy food, clean water, and proper shelter goes unmet, and for those misusing what they have in the main pursuit of pleasure. Feed them with all the good things of Christ for life now and in eternity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Have mercy on those whose lives have been broken by violence and crime. Feed them with hope and a new life in Christ. And bless our brothers and sisters in prison and those who minister to them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Feed those who are sick or sorrowing with healing and consolation through Christ. We pray particularly for... Pastor Frank and Mary, Erna McBride, Jack Herner, Eric and Deanna Albrecht, Eric Bodner, Clyde and Josie Noble, Josie's sister Mary Lou, Jane and Jim Vasco, Jack Massuno, our shut-ins Mona Bartley, John Recti, Pauline Honey, Lois Johnson, Lorraine Bogusak, Emily Listo, Grace McDermott, Marilyn Tuber. Be with those dealing with wildfires here in Western Canada and also in the United States. Be with Haiti and Cuba and Afghanistan as they're experiencing undue hardships, terror, and want. And still continue to uplift and uphold Steve Dugan's family as he still mourns the loss of his son and also for the Cool family still mourning the loss of Carl. Be with all those in mourning or loss, that they see you as the resurrection and the life, as well as the bread of life. And meet the needs of others we know personally to be in want, and whom we now name silently in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you heard the prayers of your people in the wilderness, and fed them bread from heaven despite their sin. Graciously hear us today, and feed us too in the bread of life from heaven, even our Lord Jesus Christ. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And using Luther's morning prayer, we pray together. I thank you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my goodness and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you now and always. Amen. We close with our last symbol, Bird of Light from Heaven, which is sung to the tune of Now the Rest of the Need Night Shadow. <laughs>
Let us then go in God's grace, serving our Lord in peace and joy. Thanks be to God. Thank you.